Welcome back to another episode of Brands Brands. I'm Mark Brand from Alpha Controls, one of Canada's leading suppliers of sensing, measuring and controlling instrumentation for a variety of different industries. When performing temperature calibrations, do you ever ask yourself, should I be using a dry well or a calibration bath? I've been doing this for 25 years and that's probably one of the most asked questions I get regarding temperature calibrations. Today we're going to be looking at both dry wells and calibration baths and what things to consider when choosing the right heat source. Again, before we get started, sorry for the background noise. Dry wells are designed to be used with inserts with fixed hole patterns, just like this one. This one, as you can see, has four different hole sizes. This can be a little bit limiting because you gotta make sure that the probe that you're calibrating can fit into one of the holes that's in your insert. Dry wells, by design, are very quick to reach temperature. It can have a very wide temperature range, sometimes up to over 700 degrees C. They might not have the best stability and uniformity, but they're extremely portable. All right, so now let's look at calibration baths. Calibration baths use fluids rather than the fixed inserts like we looked at in the dry well. This can be an advantage because you don't have to worry about the probe sizes like you do on a dry well. Because of the fluid, you can put any size of probe, any length, any sheath diameter, and you can also do multiple probes. You're not limited to the amount of holes you have in your insert for the amount of probes that you can do at one time. The one thing with baths using silicone oil is you have a very narrow temperature range. This is due to the spec on the silicone oil that doesn't allow you to go up over certain temperatures because it can get very hazardous. Because you're using silicone oil, it can get messy, so you gotta be careful. These do have great uncertainties and stabilities, but obviously not that portable. Let's take a look at a few things that need to be considered before choosing your heat source. First thing we're gonna look at is accuracy. If you remember, baths had much better uncertainties than the dry wells. So if you need to be down in this area of uncertainty, a bath is your choice. If you can be up in this area, then go for a dry well. The next thing to consider is what your application is. If your application is going on site where you have to do multiple probes very quickly, then maybe a dry well is for you. But if you're calibrating multiple probes of different sizes and different lengths, then maybe you need to consider a bath. The next thing to look at is the temperature range. This is also very important because baths have very narrow temperature ranges. Anything above 300 degrees C, you need to consider something other than a bath. This can be a very detailed topic and we've really only scratched the surface. And to be honest with you, I can talk about this stuff all day long. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Brands Brands.